Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Valeria and this is the Off-Road Ranch, as usual. Today I would like to tell you how I went to choose sites. As I said earlier, unfortunately, when I was working on my laptop in the apartment building where I live, there were problems with electricity and my motherboard and all the devices connected to my laptop burned out and I was left without raw data that I shoot for you. However, this video will be very helpful. I already gave the theory in the video about the site selection criteria. Today I will show in practice how these examples work. Of course, it would be much better if I show it live, but I don't have the opportunity. However, we will take a look at my new piece of land and go over the details when I draw up documents for the purchase of the site. Georgia has a diverse relief with an exceptional variety of soil, plants and animals. More than 80% of its territory is occupied by ranges and uplands, which cause difficulties in finding a flat piece of land with a small height above sea level. But of course, there are lowlands and plains in the country. The Republic lies in the Mediterranean zone. These factors, of course, are favorable for the development of organisms, their reproduction and diversity. Due to the vertical zonality in the country, all the landscapes of European land are represented in miniature. From semi-deserts and humid subtropical coastal zones to mountain tundra and eternal snow. Another factor is that Georgia is located at the junction of diverse faunistic and floristic regions. In addition to local species, there are species from the Mediterranean, from the European plain, the Iranian highlands and Central Asia. Thanks to this, all four seasons can be observed within one or two days. Deep snow on the peaks, fog with rain and snow in the mountains, young grass with spring flowers in the foothills, and finally, hot summer among evergreen palm trees at the Black Sea coast. I have chosen more than 50 sites that suit me completely or partially. Almost all of them are on a plain or at an altitude of up to 800 meters above sea level. All of them have different vegetation and all of them are completely different despite the fact that I have the same requirements for all of them. I said earlier that the height above sea level is one of the most important parameters for me as I have lived on a plain all my life and I don't feel very good in mountains. In addition, the higher you climb the mountains, then as a rule the ground is steeper, more rugged and uneven. Rocky soil and lack of cover soil is often found in a rocky area, which entails very difficult, long and expensive construction. In addition, if the site is poorly chosen, then clouds may pass through your site, which means constant moisture in the air and the ground, and being in the way of wind currents. I compiled a large table with criteria where I included coordinates, area, availability of infrastructure, transport routes, objects on the site, characteristics, advantages and disadvantages, and even an approximate preparation time and estimated initial costs. So, I was already prepared. How was it possible to know this just by seeing photos on the internet? An experienced, highly qualified programmer looks at the code and sees mistakes without testing and checking on a computer. An expert anthropologist looks at bones and understands a person's nationality, gender, age and lifestyle. And an experienced builder, physicist, geologist looks at the earth and maps and sees those things that most people won't be able to characterize even after research. I have an old good friend. He is an excellent specialist in his field with 20 years of international experience who can replace 20 people. He built very complex infrastructure facilities around the world in all types of conditions. He also professionally goes hiking and understands a lot of animals, 
plants, types of soils and features of nature. Of course, his consultations are very expensive and I wouldn't be able to pay for his advice on choosing a site. But he is the type of person who comes on vacation not to lie on the beach. So when I started asking him advice about choosing a site, he decided to devote his time to me studying the relief, vegetation and nature of this beautiful country. And also my friend who speaks local language and has a car agreed to go with us. We decided that she would be able to communicate with local population better than me and this would help to understand the situation at the site and situation with documents better. For a full-fledged study of the earth, the geologist took with him a minimal set, a rangefinder, a 100 meter tape measuring, a radiation measuring device, a wall thickness measuring device, an ultraviolet illuminator that shows the presence of traces of human activity and mold. Black mold is especially dangerous since it cannot be removed by anything than burning the building. And this is still not a guarantee of its removal. For us, he took helmets, headlights, goggles, gloves and warned what to wear so as not to get hurt or cold. And we went on a journey. The first plot I paid attention to and I want to tell you about was as much as 30,000 square meters. It was a good site. It was almost level. The soil was fertile, but little clay. Fruit trees were planted along the site, along the crossroad for hundreds of meters. And the geologist noticed immediately that all the trunks were ignored by animals. This meant that animals could become a problem for farming, so it must be taken into account in the future. There was an unregistered pond on the site, which had stagnant water without underground springs. It was saturated with some kind of metals, which the geologist identified by the color and smell of the water. The pond had to be either ennobled and registered, or buried, which could have taken thousands of cubic meters of sand. But there are various inevitable features in the purchase of any land. There was a cold and deep cellar on the site, which wasn't waterproofed, but later, after construction work, it could become very useful as a storage. I really like the area. But when I decided to buy it and we began to talk in more detail about the price and documents, it turned out that the entire plot is a lease of agricultural land, which the owner initially kept silent about. And this means that I cannot buy this land at all, because a non-citizen cannot buy a land with a category for agriculture. And even if I could buy it, it is an agricultural lease and I cannot build on it what I want. I am obliged to conduct farming throughout the land. That's why the whole land of 30,000 square meters costs so little that I could afford it. I have a separate video about my finances and the value of money. And you can see it in the top right corner. So we went on further. The next plot I want to talk about was much smaller, 5,000 square meters, but its price was more in line with the market than the sale price for the list land. The site wasn't far from the road, so dust-proof plants were planted around the territory. When people live at their own land, they do nothing for no reason, because the land requires a lot of time and such people doesn't have time for fun. And nature, all the more, gives a cause and effect relationship in everything. Electricity was supplied to the site, both 220 volt and 380 volt, which is important for construction. There was even a bus route relatively close, which meant that the site could be reached without a car, although not every day. There was a house on the site that had to be demolished. 
and also there was a good garage with concrete floor slabs and a dry basement, which is very important if you have a car. It was a big advantage. Also on the territory there was a barn made of hollow silicate blocks and a bathhouse, but they required serious reconstruction. Water was supplied to the site and sewage was made, and even concrete paths were laid in some places. It was a very comfortable and good site. But when we went further, it turned out that the site was divided into two parts by a road, and the second part was in the flood zone of the hydroelectric power station that was nearby. Of course, when studying the map, I thought that there was a hydroelectric power station and I took this moment into account, because one of the best practices when choosing a site is to study maps. But firstly, in the announcement of the sale of the site, it wasn't said that it was divided into two parts. Small unpaved paths are not always drawn on maps, or sometimes owners do not indicate the boundaries of their land accurately, or do not show shortcomings specifically. I cannot put up a fence and plan a full-fledged activity when I have constantly cross the public area. Sometimes it is possible to build an underground tunnel, because the situations are different, and sometimes the solution is acceptable, but not in my case. But what is worse, it wasn't indicated that the site was in the flood zone in the event of the breakthrough of the main dam. And a person inexperienced in construction will not understand that he is buying a land with the risk of an industrial accident. Even if such a probability is, for example, 1% according to the state authorities, the presence of earthquakes and avalanches up in the mountains cannot be ruled out. I am still in a seismically hazardous zone, and I don't know the level of responsibility of those who build this hydroelectric power station. Of course, I had to refuse of purchasing the site. And finally, I was lucky with the next land I will tell you about. It is perfect. Yes, it is ideal because it is completely abandoned. There is a green forest everywhere. There is a small river nearby. There are almost no neighbors, which means fewer potential problems. We were met not by the owner, but by his friend neighbor, because the owner would have to go a long drive in order to show the site. And the documents need to be drawn up not at the site, but in government bodies. The owners came there only one, two times a month to take a walk in the forest. And the site itself wasn't looked after. So there is almost 6,000 square meters of beautiful bushes and trees and very clean and fragrant air. Sometimes there is even a metal mesh fence on the borders, which is convenient for understanding the boundaries of the site. The owner assured me over the phone that the land didn't border protected or forested areas that could restrict my construction. We learned from our neighbors that the radiation background could be increased somewhere. So the device for measuring radiation was very useful to us. And in addition, I gained new knowledge and skills. Fortunately, all the indicators were within the acceptable limits and the device responded well to various particle measurements. On the site, there is a house made of wooden logs with an area of around 50 square meters. There is also a stove and a staircase to the roof. There is no black mold in the house. The foundation remained strong enough and of high quality to have a chance that it would have a crack so the house would fall apart. It means that it doesn't need to be demolished, but it needs to be reconstructed. And several people can accommodate there when time comes to build a garage. Not far from home there is a pole with electricity, which means that there will be no issues with electricity and construction. Several bags with garbage were buried around the house, but these are trifles. So I decided to return home, meet with the owner and draw up documents for the purchase. 
and I hope that very soon I will start a new stage in my projects. I am very grateful to my good friends to take in the time to help me to communicate with population and show me a lot of new things, because without them I could choose a problem area. But even if you don't have the opportunity to hire a specialist, you can explore the various maps which I talked about in my previous video and I will not repeat here. You can also create a table of criteria which you fill out and see a more complete picture. If you need such a table for yourself, write in the comments and I will share my table with you in the community. So you can change it if you wish. If you would like to support me, then you are welcome to subscribe, like, comment and donate if you have a desire and a possibility. I will be thankful if you help me to develop the channel. It was Valeria, the Off-Road Range. Wish you all the best and see you soon.